Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video I'm excited to cover new properties that unlock new types of desktop navigations. You can now use viewport units within the min and max height properties and these will work on any layer within your page but also within components. So let's dive into our demo project and have a look at how this works. We'll create a desktop navigation from scratch. So here we have a simple top bar with a logo and a button. It's pinned to the top left and right sides and it has a fixed width and height. And we can right click to turn this into a component. I'll hit create. And this brings us into the component canvas. So here we'd like to create two variants. The first one will be the open variant or the expanded navigation state. And we'll create another variant called closed, which will essentially be the initial state of the top bar. So here I'll set the height to something like 800 pixels. And then I'll zoom out to create a second variant. And this we'll call the closed variant. And we'll give this one a height of 64 pixels again, because we'll use this as the initial state later. Making the primary variant the expanded state in setups like this is quite useful, as it allows us to edit all the links in one go without creating unnecessary variant overrides. I'll select the text layer here, remove the variable from the content property, and let's label this with close and then we'll label it menu again in the second variant. Next we'll go back to the primary variant and select the wrapping stack of our text label and with that selected I'll hit L to add a new interaction on click to the second variant and I'll do the same thing in reverse. So we can now click to cycle between these two variants. Next, let's add some links to our menu. So I'll hit T and I'll add a text layer onto the canvas. And I'll also give it a text style. Now, before I drop it in, I'd like to quickly show you that we have this logo and button stack that is absolutely positioned within our navigation. So it doesn't occupy any space in our stack. It will always be positioned 20 pixels from the top left and right sides. And here you'll see that the navigation itself is a stack. So let's go back to our text layer and drag it onto the navigation. And I'll hit Command D to duplicate it a few times, adding a unique label to each navigation item. Then I'll select all navigation items, right click, and I'll hit add stack. And I'll set the width and height of this stack to fill. I'll also set a line to left, and I'll give this a padding of 20 pixels. This is normally where we would add the links, but we'll skip that part in this video. Instead, we'll focus on the new properties that can help us solve the issue we now have in this setup. We would like for this component to animate from its closed state of 64 pixels to the open state that should occupy the entirety of the viewport. However, our links are set to fill, so they take up the available space, which would give us unwanted animations. More so, this wouldn't really animate to the viewport at all, given that we have a fixed height set of 800 pixels. With this release, we can now fix both of these issues. I'll select the links and I'll add a min height property. I'll then set the type to viewport so we get 100 VH, aka it occupies the entirety of the viewport. And we can set the heights of the parent stack to auto and then we can reselect the links stack and set its height to auto as well. So we're now animating from a fixed height of 64 pixels to the entirety of the viewport, plus setting this minimum height also fixed our links collapsing in the closed variant. And just like you can do with fixed layers on your breakpoints, you can resize this viewport bill to affect how the viewport height 
is represented on the canvas. And now you can even double click on it to set a manual value. With our basic setup in place, it's time to go back to the home page and make some final edits here. First, we'll want to set the initial variant to the closed variant. We'll also want to set the position type to fixed. And finally, we know we're animating the height here. So we want to make sure the height is set to auto. All right, and with that in place, let's go ahead and give our page a preview. And as we click on menu, the navigation animates from 64 pixels to the entirety of the viewport. However, our animation is quite fast, so I can go back in and change the transition settings as such. Stiffness to 300 and damping to 50. And let's give this another preview. That's much better. We can also play a bit with the background. So for example, we could give it some alpha so you can still see the background colors. I'll set it to about 60% and then we can go back to the preview. And there we go. Now there's a lot more we could do here, like add custom appear animations or hover variants. And you can find a final version of this demo with a few of these extra additions in the description down below. And that's pretty much it for this video. We hope you enjoy these new features and stay tuned for more navigation updates coming soon.